Good to have you all back for another episode of Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture, broadcasting live these days from half around the world, from near Munich, Germany, where I am, and back to Honolulu, Hawaii. So can we get the first picture up, which illustrates our friend DeSoto wandering around and uh, documenting for us um, how it looks in back in Honolulu. And unfortunately, after the COVID-19 lockdown, when we started to open up or we planned to, uh, another happening, which is the racial riots came, which actually didn't develop as drastically on our island for several reasons, but especially the high-end stores were afraid enough to close their storefronts again, and they boarded them up with plywood that they probably got from Home Depot or likewise, and that comes from the Pacific Northwest. The ship there is borated over there. So not the most pleasant uh, use and appearance of wood uh, for us woodpeckers who are very, very passionate about wood. So uh, that being the case, let's uh, get our spirits up and get to the next slide. Because uh, already uh, some shows ago, we had shared an emerging um, talent's work, uh, Nicholas Civitano's uh, doc, uh, Doctor of Architecture thesis, proposing a new uh, wood construction system, in his case, out of a cross nailed with an aluminum nails at that point out of uh, local uh, eucalyptus uh, trees and, and ironwood. And DeSoto and I have been doing some covering about that one. Today, which the picture on the left gives you a little clue about uh, another material that's uh, even more unconventional and surprising. And we get to the third slide. And with that, um, I am going to introduce my guest, Kelly Keanu. Hi, Kelly. Aloha. Hi, Martin. Hi, good to have you on the show. And, and please help us about when you came up with uh, what we're talking about today and refer a little bit to this slide here, what we see. Sure. And I appreciate uh, you having me on the show. Um, so um, just graduated uh, University of Hawaii School of Architecture. And this is one of the projects that we had. Uh, one of our studio projects focusing on Vietnam and worker housing and how we can provide for that need. And so in this project, we had looked at some different local options um, as far as material and providing something that was uh, natural, that was uh, cheap, that was affordable, and that was pleasing uh, aesthetically, uh, visually to the touch and feel. And uh, so with this project, we, uh, began our search to look for local, what that local material would be. And this led us into using uh, coconut wood as one of the main sources of the building uh, material. And so this project, like I said, focusing on Vietnam and being very humid and hot uh, place. Um, uh, we also wanted to focus on a material that would be uh, not only local and beautiful, but that also uh, could help with ventilation and um, and different aspects of improving a uh, worker's life as they uh, work all day, you know, very hard labor and then come home to something uh, pleasing that they could enjoy. Absolutely. And we want to add that we did that in collaboration with our utmost Vietnam and tropical expert, uh, Tropicure Rockwood. Uh, hi, David. And thanks for having uh, joint ventures with us on, on that. So go to the next slide, and, and this is actually illustrating what you already talked about here. Here's your project that you did with your team, uh, the more overall concept at the bottom. And at the top, you came up with this idea of a very uh, unconventional, again, to say the least, uh, material construction system, right? Exactly, exactly. And so here we wanted to uh, use traditional materials and local materials found in coconut wood and kind of infuse that with uh, some of this modern wood technology um, that is found in cross laminated timber. And so with this, we uh, started to develop our own uh, version of a coconut wood uh, cross laminated timber product uh, for the main structure of this building. Mm -hmm. And let's go to the next slide here. Um, 
What what do you remember remember about that one? <laughs> you see the next slide? Yeah. So uh, on, on the next slide, we see uh, again where I was kicking in back again because, oh, we go to the previous, sorry, Eric, we were too fast. Uh, this is something I'm hoping to uh, offer when uh, travel gets safer, although in Europe we opened up again, and so hopefully this can happen soon. It's an um, anticipated study abroad, and I want to share with uh, interested uh, members, participants, the post-occupancy and uh, evidence-based design life cycle assessment projects we've done. This one on top is our own. We might have been ahead of the game, uh, the office home, how we call it. So obviously uh, the reverse of something that we're all very used to working from home, uh, home office. And this project, next slide, um, is uh, built in which way? Maybe you fully explain all of it. Yeah, so, uh, you know, this was part of the inspiration of where we got for our Vietnam project and and uh, looking at Martin's project and how we use this uh, type of cross laminated timber to make this uh, simple yet beautiful structure, all natural, all made out of wood. And, um, um, you know, the not only uh, is it beautiful, but the way that it's constructed, quick construction time, uh, very solid, very efficient, uh, tight building structure. Uh, great for um, you know mechanical systems and and so this was a, a lot of inspiration for where we got to put together our Vietnam project uh, using coconut cross laminated timber. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we have to say it, it was a couple of years ago. So this is still sort of the original and kind of the archaic way of cross laminating. We actually use glue to put them together, and that presents some challenges. Of obviously, glue is a material questioned by some people. Also, as far as the fire rating, um, there were some concerns about that. So, so again, that was then and now is now. And let's go to the next slide, uh, which is a project, an even earlier project, however, on, on our side that inspired you even more. Can we explain a little bit why and how this is different than the previous construction system? Yeah, so, and, uh, you know, understanding uh, some of the things that Martin was able to share in his personal experience of actually using this material and the success of it, um, you know, inspired us to be able to uh, take this one step further and bring it from, you know, a, a European setting to a tropical setting and uh, infuse that with a local understanding of uh, local woods and uh, the benefits of uh, using material uh, found right here in, in the local uh, construction sites. Mm -hmm. And while the previous project is CLT, so cross laminated, this one here, as we can call it, a side nails because you just nail one board to the next and so on. And while I was honored to uh, share with you my previous experience, I had a similar situation back then in 2002 with a gentleman that you see at the very top left, his portrait there, uh, just below the book, he's an author, which is the Timber Manual, and that's Julius Natura, who's a professor at the EPFL in Luzon. So thanks, Julius, for having been a coach and an inspiration for me. Uh, in order to convince my client, I had to uh, uh, build that sort of full-scale mock-up that you see me with more hair in front of it. Uh, and so uh, we, the client was very suspicious of building entirely in solid timber for a 40,000 square foot school. And so we had to go ahead and, and build this uh, full scale mock-up that shows all the details and all the connections and how that was a motivation for you. We'll, we will see it further down uh, our talk. So let's go to the next slide and kick in and, and start where you uh, where you departed from or where you kicked off here on this picture. Yes, definitely. So uh, here in this slide, you know, I, I worked with uh, as, as a carver and woodworker here in Hawaii for quite a few years. So I understand a lot of the woods and a lot of the uses and benefits of it. Uh, but coming across, across this diagram really um, connected with me because it showed all the benefits of coconut wood. And if you can see that, um, you know, as far as a numbering system and giving it a rating, uh, coconut wood compared to other local woods here in Hawaii, 
has some of the best benefits uh, across the board as far as different types of uses. Uh, but one category that was um, uh, discerning to me is the category of uh, major commercial timber uh, where there's a circle and the there's no X there. And so coconut wood, although it's been around for many years, it's a, it's a, it's a material that has been used for local civilizations for thousands of years as a main major material in uh, many different ways, uh, in building homes and building canoes and building musical instruments uh, and using it for weapons and different types of things. But uh, although it's been used uh, traditionally in uh, uh, in the native uh, Polynesian or different, even in different tropical regions uh, as a construction material, or uh, it's not been commercialized at all. It's not mass produced and it's not used across the board in any way. And so what I wanted to focus on is how can we use this uh, local material and bring it into the commercial realm and use it uh, more fully in different uh, cities and regions, um, whether it's in the uh, you know, major, major cities such as Honolulu or more rural areas of Hawaii or even other countries um, like Vietnam or the Philippines where there are uh, millions, literally millions of coconut trees growing and ready to be used. Absolutely. And the top row of pictures is in a little sort of funny way showing how most people, and especially we with our mono economy, at least in the past, uh, currently not working, which is tourism. This is how the visitors basically know about coconuts in various ways. You know, there's the food trucks along the, the roads, uh, you know, serving coconut milk drinks, and then you got the coconut bras, and you got all sorts of things, but again, hardly ever would anyone imagine it being of significance for the built environment, and that's the exciting endeavor you, you took on. And while you said, you know, it, it, it applies to many of the other tropics, which uh, maybe more abundance of um, actually the, the wood source, but you still wanted to take it home or, or keep it home at, at the same time. So that brings us to the next slide here and explain a little bit your, your how you looked on the island and what, what you're suggesting to uh, actually then have sufficient um, uh, you know, uh, material to uh, go what, which you will share with us further along. Yes, exactly. So, you know, it's it's uh, obvious that Hawaii has for hundreds of years been an agricultural state. I mean, looking at pineapple, looking at sugarcane, and even before that, uh, before these commercial type of items were used, uh, there was abundance of other tropical crops uh, such as taro, or um, even coconut trees were uh, highly used here as well. And so, although we do not have uh, large coconut forests such as in uh, Southeast Asia, where they uh, they really have this market of making coconut water and coconut oil, um, there is still opportunity to bring this um, uh, this material back to Hawaii and help with the economics of Hawaii's agriculture as well as agroforestry uh, sectors. And so, looking at different areas throughout Hawaii, and uh, there's quite a bit of open land, agricultural land, and opportunities to grow this uh, material here in Hawaii. And so the diagram on the bottom, if you took a one acre plot and you space these coconut trees um, at a recommended 21 feet apart, you can grow about 81 trees on one acre lot. And so, uh, you know, understanding this and looking at all the open land throughout Hawaii, throughout the state of Oahu and many of the uh, outer islands here in Hawaii, there's a lot of opportunity uh, to grow these coconut uh, forests. And so one of the great benefits of coconut trees, unlike other trees in agroforestry or uh, uh, other uh, crops uh, such as sugarcane and pineapple, uh, coconut tree, it's beneficial throughout pretty much its entire life. Uh, as it grows, you have the leaves, you have the coconuts, uh, which there is no um, limit to the amount of things that it can be used for, whether coconut oil, coconut water, uh, making things with the coconut shell, things with the coconut husks. Uh, things woven from the leaves of the coconut tree. So it's, it's a giving tree. That's why it's called the tree of life uh, in many 
tropical nations, it's a tree of life for, for an important reason because uh, it gives life and it's uh, useful for uh, a wide variety of things. Uh, so not only growing these trees for the end use of the wood, but throughout its uh, span, we can use many of its um, resources uh, even before we harvest the wood. Absolutely. And um, in, to uh, comply to our rules and regulations at the School of Architecture of the University of Hawaii, uh, you had to gather a team of uh, at least interested, in best case, expertise and experienced people. So let's go to the next slide and please introduce your extended team to us, Kali. Yes, definitely. So as part of my team, um, I really wanted to bring on people who we're familiar with this type of system that I was trying to put together and motivated in this uh, realm. Uh, so besides uh, Martin, uh, who was uh, my chairperson, I also had Ian Robertson, uh, who was over at the School of Engineering here at the University of Hawaii, who also uh, collaborated with uh, some folks in Maui um, to do some uh, mandala homes, to do some uh, studies on using coconut wood in, as a construction material. Uh, also, Bill Chapman, uh, Dean Chapman was on our team, as well as uh, Joey Valenti. Uh, many people know him for his uh, Albizia work and, and all his research and his applied studies and um, the things that he's contributed to using um, trees here in Hawaii that might be looked at as uh, waste trees, but actually can be used in structure as a structural material as well. And so collaborated uh, with this team uh, we're able to come up with a great project uh, with a lot of good direction and uh, and help from each member of the team. Yeah, and another team member you introduced by uh, looking, finding it at the, which you see at the very top left, which is my alchemist chamber, my office. And, and one of these Christmases when I came back from my uh, home trip, I basically brought something with me that I introduced to you and you got hooked on that one and that gets us to the next slide and explain please what, what that one is. Yes, uh, so, uh, you know, quite a few years ago in one of our uh, student classes, uh, Martin had introduced us uh, to this big, big company who had a wood nail gun uh, that is uh, what they call Ligno Lock, uh, which is the first uh, uh, of its kind to pneumatically shoot wood nails uh, into material. And so I really wanted to incorporate this in my research and in my studies. Uh, one, because it was natural and all the benefits as well that comes from it. Um, in my project, it was something that I wanted to not only use this modern understanding of uh, mass timber, but also to keep it as natural as possible. And so infusing this uh, ligno lock wood nails in my project uh, was very important and key for the success of, uh, mm -hmm. of this project. And, and also ex explain to us the guy next to the nail and the nail is next to the, the Beck company name, but explain the guy uh, next to us and who exactly. has the fantastic name of and the mysterious name of vascular bundle. So what is yeah. that? Yes, yeah, so in the picture in the bottom left corner, um, if you took a uh, you know, small piece of uh, coconut wood and you kind of smashed it apart, um, you would find uh, that really the structural strength of the coconut wood is found in its vascular bundles, which are these veins that run up through the entire trunk. And the, the more density of these veins, the higher the density is, uh, the stronger the, the wood is. And so ironically, uh, unlike uh, other types of hardwoods or woods in general, where the center is the heartwood and the hardest part of the, the densest part of the tree, that is quite opposite with coconut wood where the peripheral area is the densest part of the tree. And so the, one of the signs of finding what are the densest part is these vascular bundles that run through the trunk. And when you find a higher density of these vascular bundles, um, that's where the strength is. And so in the upper uh, right pictures, you'll see on the right, uh, one of the ligno lock wood, nail, wood nails. Uh, and on the left, you'll see one of these vascular bundles uh, that are extracted. So side by side, uh, it, you know, it's almost complementary to each other, like uh, coconut wood 
and vascular bundles uh, wanted to be a lignolock wooden nail or, or vice versa. The wooden nail wanted to be a, a vascular bundle. And so um, co collaboratively, you know, they were great as far as uh, being sustainable and using materials um, that are, you know, that we don't have to worry about as far as um, uh, any VOCs or, you know, what it comes from and it's what, it, what it's made out of. Yeah, and also different than the, uh, which already the, the aluminum nail that from a previous uh, system that Nick used uh, already not as vulnerable to ruin the, 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 the saws that you and the blades of the saws you cut the wood with, but obviously wood, you know, connecting wood is a even more mutual fit and they indeed look like buddies, you know, getting along very well with each other. And getting along very well with each other gets us to the next slide because you're a man of many occupations and uh, Silva and I were looking at aviation on the island connecting us to the rest of the world in a multiple variety of shows and one of them is quoted up there and uh, below that I put the airline Delta airline and explain us how you connected with them and how they were helpful here. Exactly. So uh, prior to going to school, um, you know, I worked for Delta Airlines for quite a few years. And uh, actually, my first couple of years while going to school, I was still uh, working as a flight attendant for Delta Airlines. And so having that benefit, you know, I really wanted to use it uh, to my advantage, especially in my research. Um, so uh, Martin introducing me to um, not only the Lignone Log Nail Gun, but also uh, to the CEO and to the crew there at Ligno Lock um, in uh, Austria. So in getting contact with them uh, and getting contact with Christian Beck, the CEO of the company, we had a lot of good conversation and understanding how their technology can be used in uh, our coconut wood. And uh, I also asked them if he wouldn't mind if I visited their company and brought some wood along with me. And we did some testing at their facility. So in January of this year, I actually uh, took a flight with a big box of coconut wood and we did quite a bit of testing uh, right there at their facility in Germany. And I was uh, so fortunate not only to have Christian Beck on board with my research, but he also dedicated a whole day's worth uh, with his uh, research and development team. Um, and we spent the entire day working on this coconut wood and understanding how uh, the coconut wood and the ligno lock are compatible and compared to each other. So the large picture uh, shows one of these initial testings that we did there at their facility in uh, shooting some coconut wood uh, with the ligno lock nail guns. Yeah, and at the bottom left, we have to say that was you when you were proactively on your own bought a gun online. And then exactly. uh, share with us what then happened once you met uh, Christian and gets us to the next slide and explain a little bit more the process uh, going from there. Yeah, so a couple of weeks prior to my trip, I actually found a company online where I could buy my own gun. And so I did some of my own testing just to understand uh, if it is actually a viable resource to, co to bring these two together. And I did have a couple of... Um, uh, you know, great uh, um, uses of it, and uh, it was working well, but there's also quite a few uh, issues with using the gun that they had at that time. And so they did have an <clears throat> upgraded model, which when I went to their company in uh, Austria, I brought my nail gun that I bought uh, just a couple of uh, weeks before with me, and they actually traded out for their uh, newest model, uh, which was actually... Uh, had in a, a lot of enhancements which made uh, each shot uh, go in a lot smoother and um, and so it was a, a great uh, upgrade to have their latest gun and they actually sent me home with uh, one of their newer guns which was great for my applied research part of my uh, studies. Absolutely and on the left we can see again on the very left we can see how it is in the coconut wood, and on the next to that, we can see how it's in more conventional wood, right? And again, yeah. for 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 all of you, this was this was new territory. So you guys were uh, 
extremely excited when we were all. But you didn't just do the, the, the mere shooting, you also did other tests that gets us to the next slide and explain to us what they were. Yes, yeah, so um, uh, like I said, Christian had dedicated a whole team to work with me for one full day. Um, his research and development team, as well as uh, his uh, guy, Thomas, who also does the testing. So after each shot, we, um, we put together pieces uh, that we could test for shear as well as pull out, pull out strength. And uh, not only was I impressed, but also their team uh, there in Germany, uh, their research team was also impressed as well. How well, um, not only did the ligno lock nails shoot into the coconut wood, but also um, the, the amount of strength that it provided in shear as well as in holding. And so we had great results uh, from that. And of course, um, you know, to get uh, excellent and uh, uh, results, you should do, uh, you know, 30 of these tests for each. But you know, I was limited in the amounts of coconut wood I could take. So we only did about uh, three tests for each category. Uh, but still, we had great results. Yeah, absolutely. We're getting close to the end of the show and we will close with uh, you showing us your team, your Austrian team. So let's go to the next and last slide. And again, yes, explain so, uh, to us who is who. To introduce, so uh, myself with the Aloha shirt of course, uh, uh, shirt of course. Mm -hmm. and uh, to my right uh, is Christian Beck, um, CEO of the company and uh, this, uh, Beck uh, company, uh, I believe he's the fourth uh, generation. Uh, it was started uh, by his great, great, great grandfather. And so he is uh, recently, I believe about two years ago, became the CEO and what a wonderful guy. Uh, picked me up from the airport and really hosted me very well. Uh, to his right, uh, Stefan, his uh, director of uh, uh, research and development. And then on the other side to my left in the picture, um thomas who was a great uh resource there and so this is the team that hosted me for uh, not only that one day of testing but for a day prior and after uh taking me around the city and showing me so a little bit of germany and really develop my appreciation for not only their facility and their team but also for this beautiful country and so great results we had there um you know great collaboration we became good friends and uh we've kept in contact since then and so, uh, you know, with this, uh, with this experience, we've been able to grow and develop upon this. And uh, actually, jokingly, Christian and his team were talking about how those vascular bundles that I mentioned earlier, maybe one day they could turn into these uh, ligno lock uh, nails uh, to be shot with their pneumatic gun. So we'll see uh, yeah. if that one day yeah. come up endless opportunities and where this led uh, once you return to the islands we will share with you in the next volume two of that show and then uh, uh and you know, this is exciting enough but then uh, an, an even more important project has come to fruition and that will be the birth uh, of your son who is about to see the light of the earth in a few hours we can say so uh we uh, wish you all the best and joy and happiness for that fantastic, uh, most important project of yours. And this is already very important, so hard to talk, but you will. So uh, from uh, a proud father of many sons, um, uh, all the best wishes to you, Kelly, and your wife. Appreciate and um, again, once you have um, recovered a little bit from your uh, hospitality challenge for your new family member. We will share with the audience uh, volume two and the fantastic project and um, you came up with based upon this initial research. So yes. thank you very much, Kali, and uh, all the best. All right, appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, bye-bye.